Hi everyone, uh, this is probably going to be one of my more unusual user-defined actions. Now, in some of the scenarios that I've built out workflows for, I use this flexi task action and depending on what the business process is, I will uh, configure the workflow to store the tasks in separate workflow tasks lists. Right? That way if I have a you know HR specific workflows, they all go to the HR workflow tasks list. If it's finance, it might go to a different one. Purely just for storing things in, in you know, their own places. That's really all that's for. Now, as part of that process, what I find is that when I assign tasks, is there are generally cases where people are filling in a task form and they have to attach documents to that task form. And what I would like them to do uh, is then to grab those documents and put them somewhere, usually in a document library, because I don't really want them sitting with those uh, tasks. Now, Nintex Workflow does have a copy to SharePoint action. Right. Oops, I can't see it in this one because it's a site workflow, but it does have a copy to site uh, to SharePoint action that will actually take a document and copy it from one document to a library to another, or will take attachments on a list item and copy them to a document library as well. The downside to that action is that it only works on the current item or document that you're working on, so that workflow is running on. So if you think about having a workflow task in a task list, you're going to have to build a workflow that runs on that particular task and copies that uh, that document or copies the, the document attachments to a document library. Now, if in my case, uh, you have multiple workflow task lists, you would have to have multiple workflows, uh, you know, workflow designs that are pretty much identical on all those task lists. And if things have to change and you have to create a new task list or something like that, or you want to do the same sort of functionality on item that your workflow creates another list, you know, you're going to have to manually go and publish the workflow and do all that sort of stuff. So it's a bit of a pain. So what I've done is actually created a user-defined action called Copy to SharePoint UDA. It's basically an, like an extended Copy to SharePoint action. So let's open this up. It has a few parameters. First of all, do I want to copy the metadata? So if there are properties on that document that we're copying, do I want to copy that across? What is my destination document library? Because the end result is it's going to copy the document or documents to another location, another document library. Uh, what do I want to do if there are existing documents that live in the, uh, in the destination? So I've got things like rename existing. There's also replace existing and update existing as well. Those are the three options. And then also you're telling me use a defined action. What is the ID of the item that you're currently working on or not you're currently working on that you're uh, attachments are or your document is and the source list name now usually this instead of leave requests would actually be workflow tasks okay that's all you need and it's going to then take any documents that are attached to this item and copy them over to the destination document library so let's have a quick look at what this user defined action is actually doing let's jump over here okay first of all we have this action here this is uh probably not something you're uh, very much used to using this particular action for this particular process. And that is you see a whole bunch of encoded XML in here. You see it's quite large. And we're storing it in something called Workflow XML. Now what this is, is actually an exported workflow, right? This exported workflow simply checks uh, those parameters that we're gonna pass to use a defined action. And this is what what's actually doing the copy to SharePoint. Okay, so just remember this is just uh, a workflow, right? It's not very big, but it's uh, it does, it's doing the copy to SharePoint stuff, taking the uh, the documents that are attached to a particular item or the current document and copying them over to a destination document library. Now we're just storing all that in a in an XML variable called workflow XML. Okay. Now, we're also going to build a unique workflow name. In this case, we're going to copy, call it copy to SharePoint, and then we're going to create a new GUID, like a random ID, and it's unique, and it's got the word workflow on the end. So, hope you guys are getting where we're sort of getting to here. This user-defined action is actually taking a pre-built workflow, and it's going to publish it somewhere. Now we have a core web service action. 
and this action is calling the new text workflow web service right there and we're passing in that XML the source list which is basically where we're going to be publishing this this workflow and the name that we want to give it which is the yeah, destination workflow name which is that unique workflow we came up with so this will publish the workflow you know, usually to the workflow task list now what we want to do is given that that workflow is published we want to start a workflow so we're putting together a little bit of XML here this is the destination document so you're probably wondering what what's this what are we doing here okay let's actually jump to the next action because that'll make a little bit more sense here is another call web service action and we're calling the in text workflow web service but this time we're calling start workflow on list item so what we're trying to do is now start a that workflow that we published on that item so think of this as there's a workflow task that's, that's been completed there's a number of attachments on that workflow task and now what we want to do is actually publish a workflow to that workflow task list and then start that workflow on that task that was completed right and that workflow is going to then go and copy those attachments over to some destination library now as part of this the workflow needs to know some information for example where are we copying the documents to so the destination document library do we want to copy metadata and what do we want to do if the item or well, there's a document already that exists in a document library that is what all that association data is and that's why we want to jump back one action to this build string action and this is where you'll see we're passing in the destination document library URL what do we want to do is with the existing uh, document option and do we want to copy the metadata so this is basically just encoding all that XML we're going to pass that to that start workflow on list item web method in this core web service action okay now the next thing is part of the data that comes back is a bunch of XML so we're actually storing the workflow instance ID that is actually going to be an important one because what we're doing is we're publishing a workflow to that destination library but then we actually want to clean up after ourselves and we want to delete that workflow right so it's kind of like a temporary workflow publish it run it check that it's completed delete it again kind of an odd business process here but it's uh, something you can do okay now let's go down to this which is loop uh, and wait for the temporary workflow to complete in this case we're going to call a web service because we need to find out the list ID of that destination list we're going to pull out that list ID from the XML we're going to come down here and this is something we need to do we actually need to trim that workflow name so we need to get rid of all those wacky characters and the spaces and things like that and just get the eight character short name of this particular workflow once that's done we're going to come down here and we're going to go into a loop which means we're going to periodically query the item or the workflow task to see if that workflow has actually completed so let's have a look here there is a get workflow status uh, action I have here which is actually a query list action and you see how we're querying all that we're querying uh, the source list ID which is the workflow task list we want to pull out the workflow name right based by the short name because that's how it's stored in SharePoint and we do want to make sure that we want to filter down to the appropriate task uh, ID right and then we're going to pull out the actual workflow status or the value that'll be things like completed or waiting to uh, you know waiting or error occurred or something like that and finally at the very end once we know the workflow has finished we need to actually delete it now there is a delete workflow web method in the new text workflow web service you see the delete workflow but the thing is it actually needs a list ID which we have but a workflow ID now the only thing we have right now is the workflow instance ID which surely doesn't help us uh, in this case so we need to get the workflow ID now the only way I could find to do that let's actually jump out of here is to get the uh, is to actually query the database and it looks like my computer has frozen for a second it has I'll just leave it there so yeah we have an execute SQL action in this user defined action that will actually query the new workflow database to pull out 
that workflow instance ID. So I hope that helps and uh, I hope that helps you in reusing some, some workflow logic and actually having this concept of a temporary workflow that you can publish and delete uh, where necessary. Thanks for your time and I'll have the user defined action and the workflow and example site workflow all available for download in the blog post uh, that you're watching this video on. Thanks for your time guys.